I'm going to talk about um, the idea of a knowledge graph and how it applies to IT service management. Uh, I represent the product Fresh Service, uh, which is it's a they have put all competitions right over here, all competitors right over here. So I'm going. I'm part of Freshworks, and I represent the product Fresh Service. Fresh Service is an IT service management tool, and um, it's a it's it's a competition to com uh, products like ServiceNow or even Jira Service Management, for example. So, um, and my talk is based uh, the. Uh, I'll talk a little about knowledge graph, a little about how we are developing it and and building it, and I'll give you a, a snapshot of the journey that we went through to come to the stage that we are in right today. Before we go there, um, here is the motivator for this whole idea, right? Um, so this is from my uh, Google Photos, uh, this thing. Um, from my um, personal Google Photos, I've taken a screenshot, I put it here. And um, if you look at it, right, I have not done any of these classifications. I have not put photos and tagged them as cooking. I have not taken the photos of skyscrapers and said, hey, this is a skyscraper. But Google has figured it out. Google Photos has somehow figured it out. And they have put it into something. They have wedding and canyons and swimming and Diwali and all kinds of combinations that you have. And the question is, how did Google know all of this? Or how does Google Photo do all of this, right? Um, and you might think that this is a very trivial problem. Um, and if you take a very classification oriented lens that I get a photo, I tag it into one of those groups, then this indeed uh, is a simple problem. So you can take an image and you can put it into one of these buckets and ensure that uh, everything looks nice. But the problem comes when you discover a new item. Uh, for example, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a new festival which comes up. Uh, people start celebrating that and you have a lot of photos which where people are uh, celebrating that particular festival. Let's, let's assume some remote part of the world, this new festival has come up. Then how would Google know that the equivalent of Diwali in, in some corner of Indonesia has, has something else, right? How do they know that? Even if they were able to somehow group those photos together thematically, they are looking like the same, they are celebrating the same stuff. How would they know that 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 festival has the name of Diwali or whatever, right? So that's where the complexity of a knowledge graph comes in. Just to put images into a group is probably easier, but to discover new groups as they start happening, it is very complicated. Uh, with that, this as an example, let me show you how this entire thing might look when it comes to IT service management. So this is uh, the screenshot from our product um, and this is the view that an agent gets when they try to resolve a ticket. So let's say I have raised a ticket called my, uh, it's a little unclear but what this says is my VPN is not working and when I raise a ticket saying my VPN is, is not working, the agent when they open my ticket they get this view. And if you look at the categories here, right, you see there's a, there's a, uh, I'm not able to read it clearly. So th it says group and it says category and it says subcategory and so on, right? And you see all of those are blanks. And those are blanks because the agent is supposed to update that, say that this, this VPN is a software product and so on. They have to create their own taxonomy and kind of group everything together. And this is how it works. If a company has done it enough number of times, then we use AI to automatically start doing it from let's say the 50th time. Again, a standard classification approach. But this somehow seems wrong, right? I mean, everybody here knows what a VPN is. There is nothing secret uh, sauce in there. So we can, we should be able to say that VPN is a security product um, it is manufactured by companies like Cisco or Palo Alto and so on. So why can't we get to there? Uh, why don't we have the ability to do it? And here it becomes complex because the tail, if, if you look at the number of VPN products which are there, 
there is huge number of them. There are a few major ones, maybe five, six major VPN service providers, but there are also hundreds of other service providers and you can't effectively start understanding all sorts of VPNs which exists in the world. But that's the problem. So to, to solve this problem, we wanted to give a Google-like experience. We don't want agents to sit down and select category equal to this, subcategory equal to this and so on. We don't want agents to do that. We want our system to automatically give that classification per ticket basis. And to do that, what we essentially need is a taxonomy which looks like this. Again, uh, apologies, I think the, there's a, some form factor issue, so everything looks a little weird here. Um, so, um, what do we, uh, when we are when we are looking at this this sort of a graph, I'll I'll just go a little about what this what this graph is all about, right? So, think of a top level category called IT domain. So this is broadly IT domain as opposed to let's say finance domain or as opposed to let's say HR domain, right? So there's a broad category. Underneath that category, you could have a subcategory called development tools or creativity tools or enterprise resource planning software or desktop security, right? So you could have groups like that. Underneath desktop security, you could have antiviruses. Uh, um, um, and VPNs, right? And you could then have actual tools like Palo Alto or like PyCharm for ID. So you could have tools down below. So this is one hierarchical angle. You can also create orthogonal components. Like for example, you could say, the category is license type and subcategory is freeware versus paid versus freemium and uh, you could have open source versus commercial license so you could have orthogonal components if somehow by magic you get a graph like this and now you get a query which says my vpn is is not working etc you could do very interesting use cases here so by looking at VPN, you immediately know that it's a desktop security product. And because it's a desktop security product and you are a very secu uh, security conscious company, it becomes priority number one. Right? You can, you can kind of model that. But to model that, you need to know that VPN is a security product. And not just a VPN, any VPN which can exist is a security product. So, uh, this structure is what generally is known as a knowledge graph. Uh, it has knowledge and it is graphical in structure, so it's kind of a knowledge graph. A knowledge graph has more nuances to it um, than this simplistic diagram, but this is approximately what we have in our system today and therefore I'm presenting this. Uh, 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 a very pedantic uh, knowledge graph would, would have a lot of other things, right? But how do we build this? Uh, how do we build a structure like this for all the possible combinations of customers, their tools, etc. that we have. So, uh, to do something like this, there are three basic steps. We want to discover knowledge. Our discover knowledge means I get, in, get a ticket which says um, my, uh, my, my lattice is not working. Lattice is a HR tool that we use. I am not able to access Lattice. Let's say a ticket comes in that. I have never encountered the, the system has never encountered the word Lattice before as a HR tool. Is it able to discover that Lattice is an HR tool and do it? So that part is domain discovery. Second is identifying and categorizing whatever you have learned. So you just learned that Lattice is a new kind of tool. Can we map it back to HR? That's the second part of the problem. Or, or that's the second aspect of the problem. And the third is, once we have discovered this in a chart tool, where do we place it? Do we place it at the leaf level, node level? How do we connect? All of those kinds of decisions. So this is the entire process of how we build a knowledge graph. To um, get to the next level of this, uh, let me give you an example. Assume that somehow our knowledge graph has has come. It has, it has just appeared and uh, what would life look like in that case? So, 
let's say we have all of these things in place and we we get an example we get a a a, a, a ticket in our system that that the cisco vpn is not working that's a simple ticket we immediately are able to recognize that there is a there is cisco vpn as the span so we have a, a named entity ner model a named entity recognition model which takes a length of text and identifies relevant spans uh, of interest the relevant span of interest here is cisco uh, vpn that that entire phrase and uh, once you have identified this span you do a span classification and this span classification allows you to model cisco vpn as a software of subtype vpn of from the company cisco that that entire classification you can do once you have that your downstream applications can consume that information and do whatever you want uh, and and a typical example here would be our uh, customers would configure a rule which says if the issue is vpn type then priority should be high as an example uh, if the if the issue is from a different software you could do a different thing and so on right there are different uh, sub downstream applications which you can do it also helps you categorize tickets or or report on tickets in a better way so if let's say the cio of the company wants to know which is the biggest bucket of ticket that we are getting today then they can they know that they can do a uh, grouping by software and subtype and company and then understand where the the sort of heat map of their issues are right so this is one example where things work work well and how is it working well we know that cisco vpn is is a software we know that software is of the type vpn and we know that vpn is manufactured by cisco so that's how it works well now let's say it doesn't work well and and this doesn't work well gives you the idea of how to build the uh, build or how we are building the knowledge graph let's say the new uh, ticket which comes in is my adobe photoshop hangs on mac this is the ticket now in this case we do recognize mac and we say mac is a hardware of the type laptop of the company apple the same thing as this is covpr right uh, but we are not able to recognize photoshop the system fails in recognizing photoshop what do we do with it now here it is the uh, is the challenge of building and maintaining this one thing to do is uh, and remember that we are talking about millions of tickets uh, scale right one thing to do is you look at all tickets do some or wait for customers to give you a feedback or something like that and that approach obviously won't scale the and and we are doing something and i'll come to that what is there but it is important that we start recognizing these because the domain of new software hardware is changing every day there is no way the system can remain static we need we need to update our information database with new softwares which come in every day like hundreds of new softwares are getting built uh, every day right so we we the only way to for us to keep up on this is if this entire thing is automated so discovery of knowledge is automated and the knowledge that we want to discover is the fact that adobe is a or photoshop is a software of a particular type and we want to categorize in the same way as we are successfully doing for mac we want to say it's a type of software it's a sub type of whatever it's a manufacturer whatever so what do we do today we solve it in using four different st steps right so if you have this we have to first identify the missing span and the missing span is adobe photoshop in this case so the relevant span is that we will have to categorize that span we will have to retrain our named entity model so that it starts recognizing photoshop going forward and we have to add meta information about the entity i'll just walk through these four steps and then that sort of gives an idea of how this entire thing works so uh identify the missing span uh this is the most complicated uh, step of this entire thing how do do we know that adobe photoshop is 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 missed out uh, there is no way to know it uh the only way which seems trivial is customers come and say hey there was photoshop you did not recognize or somebody looks at the ticket one at a time and says oh this is photoshop and you missed it it will not work 
So what we do is we cluster all tickets. Um, clustering approach as opposed to the classification approach of NER, clustering approach allows us to group similar things together without actually knowing the basis of similarity. So uh, if you take two texts, one says I am not able to draw on my Procreate, another text which says I am not able to draw on my Photoshop, just because the draw and etc together, the clustering technique would cluster them together without knowing that Procreate and Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator are similar sort of products. That similarity information is sort of embedded inside the clustering uh, approach itself. So if you can cluster all of these tickets together, you get hopefully homogeneous clusters, each cluster representing some amount of uh, similar tickets together. The next step is again, even if the clusters, we are still talking about clusters of millions of tickets, right? So the next step which we do is we sample from those clusters. So each cluster, let's assume that there is one big cluster consisting all VPN stuff. Some of those VPN stuff is already tagged properly as per our group. Some aren't tagged properly, right? So we sample from those clusters to see how many, do we see evidence that there is misclassification at a cluster level. Um, this step did not exist till last year, but uh, now uh, GPT does a reasonably good job of identifying those holes. So if you send a bunch of tickets to GPT and say, do you see some entities that we have missed out? GPT comes back and gives some ideas about, yeah, you, you probably missed out this too. Um, but even if, let's say GPT, uh, we, we, we ignore the GPT step for now, we have the samples then do a manual annotation on the sample. So we send it to, uh, or we have internal annotation teams who look at these sampled data and, and from a million ticket, you can whittle it down to maybe 100 tickets or 50 tickets or 1000 tickets, which is still manually feasible and you look at missing information. If you find miss missing information, then you go to the next step. Um, any questions on this? So to identify missing span, there isn't a straightforward way. The only way to do it is be smart about group tickets together. That gives you a smaller subset to focus on, sample from that smaller subset and then just eyeball everything to ensure that we are doing a right job. Once we, once we identify the span, let's say after doing all of this uh, clustering and sampling and so on, uh, we know that this Photoshop is something that we have missed out. Uh, our, our classifier is not able to do a good job of identifying that. What we then do is we categorize this missing span. So we have to now start recognizing Photoshop. And uh, these two steps kind of go together, categorize and add meta. We do the annotation team with the help of our product owners, do a market research to identify whether this is, uh, typically Adobe Photoshop is something we will recognize very easily. It's all esoteric stuff that we, we fail to recognize. So they will do a market research to identify if that's a legitimate tool. If that's a legitimate tool, what's its use case? Where does it sit in our complicated hierarchy? And uh, we will put it there and we will start retraining our uh, we will start retraining our NER model so that this Adobe Photoshop is now recognized. Sometimes post this market research you would recognize that there is a new entity which has come in. Um, as a very uh, good example we realize that one of our customers is using fresh service as a way to manage their ATMs the the uh, automated teller machines. So technically, I mean, if you can manage a laptop using fresh service software, you can use an ATM also. ATM is nothing but a computer, right? So you can have the same sort of, but the ATM terminologies are very different. Nobody says, uh, my ATM is having a blue screen, right? I would say for your computer. So how do we know, how do we now start modeling all these ATM kind of applications, right? So now this requires a completely new entity. If you if you kind of look at our um, our structure, right? We did not have any 
we, we are not talking anywhere about ATM here. We are talking about creativity tools, productivity tools, development tools, no ATM, no money right there. So we need to create a new entry here. We need to here, we need to create a new entry. Uh, this is what I mean by create a new ontological entry to the system. So we need to update our ontology to ensure that ATM and whatever is the relevant does it. This work is done manually with the help of POs but it is done very deliberately because this has implications on everything else. If you change that graph structure, the meanings of every entity has some impact. Right? You can't introduce ATM as an idea without reviewing everything else which was there in your system. So it's done very, very uh, carefully. Once this ontology is created, you will update other entities. Uh, what this means is, uh, as a again as a different kind of example, let's say you had one big bucket which said, uh, see, uh, I mean, you, we are all using applications like MyGate and all, right? MyGate as a category did not exist. Gate application and all did not exist a few years ago. So now everybody is using MyGate and Apna Complex and, and you know, NoBroker.in and whatever, right? So let's say we introduce that category somewhere. We have to relook and see if any of the previous, did we have a no broker example previously, which we haven't updated yet. So we have to kind of review everything else. And that is what the other entity means. So what we do is in this particular step, if we have recognized Adobe as a new category, we create a new category, map Adobe and all Adobe related products back into that category. So this is how the, the knowledge graph keeps updating and, and we don't do it very frequently. We do it quite infrequently quarterly or even six months is where we do it. So we update all the entities and uh, retrain our model to start recognizing this new set of entities. Right. So the final step is uh, retrain our NER um, and just a technical detail. The NER that we are using is, um, is basically a, a sentence uh, encoder. And we run a span classifier on top of that. Once the span class span classification is that identifier, so spans classification is then put across the knowledge graph, and we inference out the um, the category subcategories of this. Right? I'm not going too much into the details of of the NER itself. Right. So this was the point I was making. This entire thing is a little semi-manual kind of effort. The automatic part is the system alerting us that there is a possibly a new update required here because you are getting new entities, new categories, but we do it manually and we do it very deliberately because uh, like I said, this, this is very complicated interactions. A software which we had previous, uh, a, a name of a software, let's say uh, MyGate, if we had previously classified it as a software of subtype others, will now suddenly become a new application and that that will change everything else in the system. So uh, we kind of uh, do it uh, a little semi-manually. Um, and this knowledge graph therefore updates uh, every quarter or, or, or so in, so, sort of every six months. Uh, we look at all the new stuff which has come in and take a deliberate call as to where do we put this. So this is the entire process of from discovering new knowledge to putting it in the right place in our graph. Uh, and that's the gist of my uh, talk today. So thank you for your time. <laughs>